hi guys welcome back to my channel in this video i'm going to show you how to sew how to cut and sew a turtleneck collar i'm sure you've seen it on pastors you've seen it around the whole place and it's just very cute and creeps and in this video i'm going to show you the easiest way to cut and sew a turtleneck collar so let's just go into the tutorial if you're not subscribed to this channel yet what are you waiting for join the family by clicking the subscribe button and the notification bell so that whenever i post a video you will be the first person to get notified so this is what we'll be starting with pattern paper eraser um paper scissors my pencil my ruler my french curve so to start it i just need a very straight line to start drafting the pattern for the turtleneck i need a straight line first so i made a straight line on the pattern paper I don't know why I was even thickening the line, but just ignore that. <laughs> so, from that point, I marked two inches. Now, I initially want I wanted this color to be two inches. After drafting the pattern, I realized I realized I, I it was bigger than what I wanted, so I reduced it to 1.5 inch. But you see that later on in the tutorial. But here, I'm starting with two inches. So I marked two inches across the entire length of the pattern paper. then i connected my markings with a straight line so i wanted like a center piece i wasn't sure that that blunt end was straight so i just drew like a straight line to show that this is where the center of the pattern is starting from So you know this my ruler has both um, centimeters and inches so i'm using the inch part of the ruler so i marked from that point i marked half an inch and from the end of the pattern sort of like the angled edge i drew a slanted line like so you guys know that when it comes to the collar so i'm trying to form like the center part of the collar that place that sits around your neck and you know it's not exactly straight it's curved so that is what i'm forming there so the circumference of my um collar it's about nine nine and a half inch nine point like 9.8 inches something like that so i want to sort of get the center of my collar and sort of not send not exactly the center so instead of marking like 4.5 i marked 5 inches to sort of divide the collar into two so if your collar is going to be 10 you mark the center at 5 inches or or 6.5 something like that so i just marked the center of my pattern at 5 inches at against 4.5 inches because i'm not exactly curving from the center i'm doing it from like to third of the collar do you understand so this is like to third of the collar i just marked to third of the collar there then i marked half an inch downwards because i want to form the collar curve we all know our collars are not straight they are a little curvy from the center so i'm trying to form the curve of the collar so i marked half an inch upwards on both sides both for the down part and for the top part what i'm going to do here now is i'm going to connect it to that point to form the curve the color curve so i used my french curve is this what it's called yeah french curve and i just drew a curved line so what i was trying to explain before was if your color is um the entire um, length of your color is five inches is ten inches instead of marking five to be the center of the collar what you mark is six because you need to curve like two third of the collar do you understand so that was just what i was trying to explain to you over there so i went ahead to form the curve so i formed the collar curve the next thing i did is from that point i don't know sorry my camera cut me off here but from the edge i just marked out my initial length so the length of this color is about nine point 
9.7 so i ma i take 9.7 first then i went ahead to add three quarter of an inch as my allowance do for my allowance for cutting and my allowance for sewing so i first of all ticked my initial measurement then i added my allowance so it's the allowance point i am marking right now so that's where i'm drawing the straight line so i just double checked again to make sure that i marked the correct thing then i extended my tape backwards and i marked three quarter of an inch you see that three quarter of an inch i added as my allowance i marked it out again because i'm going to cover that excess you know it's like a sewing allowance so you need to cover it about three quarter of an inch or exactly one inch i ended up covering out one inch although i marked three quarter of an inch so i ended up carving out one inch for that color curve do you understand so here i'm trying to form the color curve so i used my french curve and i drew the mark then i just used the, like freehand to shaping it out better You want to really take your time here to make sure your curve is alright. So I'm done drafting the color. It's this simple. Then all I did was I just cut through. So this was this is it when I was done cutting. Remember I told you that I needed just 1.5 inch. I started the measurement with two inches. Then then I realized that two inches was too much. So this is just me cutting out the excess i don't need and sorry my camera just cut me off a lot on this tutorial in this tutorial so just bear with me if some clips just you know jumped from one place to another so what i did over there was i just cut out the pattern here i took out the excess so this is the pattern piece for the turtle neck do you understand this is the pattern piece for the turtle neck so to to cut out my color i just took my fabric and i laid the pattern on it and with my scissors i just cut out the first piece on a fold then i cut out the second piece as well You can see that this pattern is not exactly straight it's curvy so this is what the um, both piece both the main piece and the lining piece looks like i don't know if you can see the visible curve around the center to to third of the collar i'm just going to go ahead to attach some gum stay to the collar because you all know you don't just sew your collar like that you have to put sort of like a stay a hold to make it firm so i attached my gum stay with my pressing iron now to then i cut out the excess the next thing i did was i cut out the excess gum stay on it So to sew the collar, what I did was I laid both pieces together and I secured them with an office pin or some office pins. I, make sure, I made sure they were well laid on each other and they were equal and even. Then I secured with a pin. Then after I was done secured, securing with a pin, I took it over to my sewing machine and I sewed across that axis from that point to the other point yeah from this point all the way down to the other point 
so it's just very easy to sew this collar although there are tricks to um sewing and top stitching when you are joining them which i'm going to show you shortly so when i was done sewing i used my scissors and i kind of um made little little cuts on the seam and the reason i did this was because i wanted when i i wanted to be able to have a well relaxed what kind of english is that i wanted the seam to be well relaxed when i turned the color over like english you not know, me today i was i made the cuts because i wanted the seam to be well relaxed and it would be puffy by the time i turn my color Mm -hmm. by the time i turn my color over <laughs> this voiceover is so hilarious so this this is what it looks like the next thing i'm going to do now is i'm going to push my seam my seam allowance that way and i'm going to top stitch down to the end so this is what i did here i top stitch mind you the part where the stitch is running on is where that place is the back part of the collar do you understand the place where you are top stitching is where it's going to be the back part of the collar the place where that the top stitch didn't run over is going to be the front part of the collar so when i was done top stitching i gave it a really good press so that it will come together it will be relaxed not puffy it will be smooth so what i did here you want to do this with a steam iron not a dry iron because that's what is going to make it relaxed and smooth so to attach the collar to the dress all i did here was i took a part of the collar which is the front part and i attached it to the neckline and secured it with an office pin and i continued till i got to the other part of the neckline now the way the this collar works is sometimes when you want to attach this collar some people the method they use is they attach both parts of the collar like they don't just pick one point the way i'm picking one point they attach both points to the collar and later they just turn over that inseam with a bias but me what i always do is what i do sometimes is i attach one side of the collar then i use the other side of the collar like to top stitch like to fold over and top stitch so i took it over to my sewing machine and i joined one part i don't know my camera also cut me off on this side what i did here was i joined the first part then the second part which i didn't which i didn't join together what i did was i turned it over and i top stitched so this was when i was done top stitching and attaching the collar to the dress i just gave it a really good press you always have to do this if you are sewing any type of color whether it's a turtleneck color or a two-piece color whatever type of color you have to give it a really 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 good press so i gave it a good press ladies and gentlemen this is what the final look looks like like isn't it simple is it not easy i told you guys it's going to be very simple if you enjoyed this video please give this video a very big thumbs up subscribe if you haven't it means a lot to me please subscribe come back for more videos try this tutorial out please 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 try it out let me know how it went and i'll see you in my next video thanks for watching i don't know why i was laughing here <laughs> thanks for watching